Hello, girls. Good morning. Today we're going to start chapter five. Chapter five is on metabolism and enzymes. So I hope you can take out your textbook and refer to this, uh, to the lesson. I've uh, copied the page from the textbook over here on my uh, screen so that I can explain to you at the same time. Okay. First of all, let's look at the meaning of metabolism. <clears throat> what is metabolism? Metabolism actually means chemical reactions which happen in living cells or living organism. So it's basically what you've learned, you know, uh, you have learned in science lesson in your form 1 to form 3 where you have uh, chemical reactions which uh, happen like um, uh, you have uh, metal react with acid and then you will get uh, hydrogen and salt. So this that one doesn't happen in living cells, all right? <clears throat> you don't have naturally occurring uh, hydrogen being produced in cells. So you will have metabolism is the chemical reaction that happen in living cells. And this refers to examples I can give you are uh, oxidation of glucose. Remember how the mitochondria produces energy. This is the process called oxidation. It happens in living cells. Okay, condensation. Remember the process of actually uh, linking your monomers, your monosaccharides and your amino acids in order to form uh, polypeptides and so on. And also breaking down, breaking down of those uh, molecules into smaller basic units we call hydrolysis so all this happens in living cells and these are just a few examples of metabolism okay so or other examples would be like digestion where you break down the uh, complex uh, molecules into smaller molecules all right digestions and so on okay now first of all let's look at there are two types of metabolism first there's one called catabolism and another one is called anabolism now, what is the meaning? What's the difference here? Okay, catabolism basically means it is a process which breaks down something more uh, complex into something more simple. So, some from something complex into simple. Okay, <clears throat> example. An example of a catabolic reaction is where you have your, this is your, what is this? Remember glucose, all right? Glucose is broken down. This is oxidation actually. Glucose uh, reacts with oxygen. It's broken down you get water and carbon uh, dioxide and also energy is released so you have something which is a very big uh, more complex molecule which is your glucose you can see c6 h12 o6 is more complicated and it's broken down into simpler substances like water and co2 which is simpler substances okay so this process of respiration is actually a catabolic reaction okay let's look at anabolic Anabolic, on the other hand, is actually building up. That means from a simple molecule or simpler molecules, it is strung together or it, it reacts together and then you get a more complex one, complicated one. Okay, let's get, look at the, uh, this example. You have water, all right? Water uh, reacts with, uh, with uh, carbon, carbon dioxide. Remember what is this? This is actually <clears throat> reaction to form glucose. So photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is an anabolic reaction whereby simpler substances okay, are formed into more complicated ones. This is glucose. All right. So you can see that the explanation here is on the textbook. All right. Now, so let's go on to enzyme now. Now, enzyme is a substance which occur in living cells. Okay. So you don't have enzymes... Uh, naturally occur in the environment, in the air, all right? And you do not have it in the soil and so on. So it is actually something that is produced by living cells. So what it does is it actually accelerates or it actually makes the process of all these processes that happen, you see, the catabolic reaction, anabolic reaction, all this metabolism, it either speeds up, usually speeds up the process of breaking up or uh, building the substance. So the enzyme is what we call a catalyst, okay? A catalyst is a substance which speeds up chemical process, okay? So this is biological process because it's a biochemical reaction. It happens in living cell. So if it's happened in living cell, we call it a biochemical reaction, a reaction that happens in living cells. So living cells, all right, uh, enzymes actually help to uh, speed up. So we call it an catalyst okay catalyst look at this word catalyst organic means it is something that is formed in a living cell all right okay now uh how does it work actually okay? you need 
let's say for example you want to break down your remember you have your maltos okay maltos is the disaccharide disaccharide with two monomers okay one monomer here and another monomer all right and this is your bond and then you want to break this down into simpler sugar Okay, so this is a disaccharide. When you, you want to break down your maltose, you need to have an enzyme. Enzyme actually speeds up the breaking down. So an enzyme has a special place where it can attach this substrate into it. So this special configuration, the shape, okay, you have a special site where it attaches. This is called the active site. Okay, so you got to use this word active site. And then once it attaches onto it, you have a complex or a bigger uh, temporary uh, molecule called enzyme substrate complex okay because this one later on will be broken down once it's broken down it will release your uh, what you call the product okay the product will be i'll draw it here okay your product here will be your two units of glucose okay so this will be your uh, units this is your glucose and glucose all right so this is called a product all right okay so you need to remember you need to have uh, when you want to mention about your enzyme you need to talk about its active site okay the active site is important because this is where the substrate actually binds to it okay and the temporary substance uh, temporary uh, uh, molecule which is uh, formed after the uh, after the substrate form uh, binds into it is called enzyme substrate complex Okay, one more thing before I just stop here. Now, how do you name enzymes? There's a system, huh? okay, a system of naming. We call it nomenclature. Nomenclature means the system of naming it, naming a substance, all right? So they, according to a group, uh, this is a scientific uh, uh, a community, the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. They introduce a system to name your enzyme. So usually, <clears throat> you look at the, the name of the enzyme follows the name of the Substrate. Substrate is a substance that it wants to break down. For example, like say, remember this one, sub, uh, substrate, the maltose is a substrate. Okay, maltose is a substrate. So it will be broken down by your enzyme or it is speed up, broken down, speeding up, uh, speed up by the enzyme to break down. So this is called a substrate. So what it does, uh, the substance that needs to be broken down or has to be reacted upon is called a substrate. So how do you know the name? How do you give the name to <clears throat> the enzyme? You look at the name of the substrate. You change the name, the last part of the name into ASE, all right, and then you will get the name of the enzyme. For example, lactase is the enzyme which catalyzes the breaking down of lactose. Okay, so this is the process called hydrolysis. Remember, you learned before. You have a uh, disaccharide. It's broken down. You get glucose and galactose. Okay, so usually this is the a formula i mean this is the system that we follow but you also remember there are certain uh, names of enzyme which do not follow this for example trypsin pepsin and renin now why they don't follow this this is because these enzymes were discovered before they set the system okay so in order not to confuse and change the name so they retain back the name trypsin enzyme and renin so these names eh, they have the in behind here so in name here also suggests that it could be an enzyme Okay, so I A S E or I N. Okay, I'll stop here first and then I'll carry on the next lesson with the characteristics of enzyme.